2 Chronicles chapter 15. In this chapter, <clears throat> recorded one of the great, if not the greatest revival Israel ever had. One of my heroes in the Bible by the name of Asa becomes king. And he put away all the idols and all the Baal worship. He was so serious about God, he even put his mother out from being queen. But it all started with a message. Our hearts will never be turned to God without hearing from the word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The Bible says the Spirit of God fell on a man by the name of Azariah who preached to Asa. And it's not a very long message, but it was a powerful message. I just want to focus on one verse, the last verse of Azariah's message, verse number 7. He says, Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. He earlier said, uh, the Lord is with you while ye be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he'll forsake you. Verse 8, the Bible says, and when Asa heard, he put into action what he heard. But I'm interested in verse number 7. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, I know it's way late in the service, but Lord, we're not having church tonight, so we might as well just get ready for a cookout. But Father, there's something about the Word of God. We know it quickens us. As Brother Ed already prayed that we'd be quickened. We know the word of God will encourage us. We know the word of God will enlighten us. It instructs us in the ways of righteousness. But we also know the word of God convicts us. Lord, a lot of folks will hang around while they're singing, but they don't like preaching. Because preaching brings conviction. They don't want to be confronted with a holy God Lord, why they know they're still in their sin. And Lord, we know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We know sinners do what sinners have always done. They just sin and make excuses why they sin. But when they hear preaching and they get confronted about their sin and their lost condition, then they have to make a decision. Will I do as what Azariah told Asa? Will I reject the Lord? Because if I do, he'll reject me or will I accept the Lord? So this morning, we want to have preaching, Lord, from you. There may be some here today that need to be convicted of their sin. There may be some here today that need to be confirmed. They're right on course. There may be some here today that might need comforted. There may be some here today that might be, need charged. There may be some here today just need some help. And so, Father, I pray, Lord, you know in body I'm weak today. But I pray, oh God, you'd speak through this old body of clay one more time. Help your people to realize how much you love them, how much you really care, but also how much we need to conform to the will of God. Now help us, Lord. That your touch, we're not much. So help us. God, help us to come face to face with thee. Well, thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. In 
verse number 7, I find three very important principles. First of all, it deals with our attitude. The Bible says, Be ye strong, therefore. We live in a day and age when I've never seen so many people that claim they know Christ, uh, but yet they're so weak-minded. They have no victory in their life. They live and dwell in defeat. Yet the Bible tells us that we have victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, The Bible says, Thanks be unto God which giveth us the victory uh, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, We're without excuse to live defeated today. Uh, We've been made more than conquerors uh, through Christ Jesus. Uh, Friends, I was just in the backyard of the devil, uh, and I watched God do wonderful things. Uh, And friend, if the devil camps on your doorstep, uh, you ought to not give it a second thought, uh, because he that lives in you uh, is greater than he that is in the world. uh, And you can have... uh, a strength in your attitude uh, that I'm going to live for Jesus come what may uh, I'm not going to let anyone or anything uh, uh, defeat me or cause me to get off course with the Lord he says uh, be a strong therefore we make so so many excuses why we can't live for Christ shame on you huh Go read Hebrews chapter 11 about those folks that lived in dens and caves and were sown asunder. Uh, Go study uh, uh, church history where folks were burned at the stake, uh, 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 where folks were crucified, uh, where folks were beheaded. Uh, 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 Friends, we don't have anything to complain about. Uh, We've got it good today, uh, and we ought to live in victory for Christ. But you can't have victory if you're weak-minded. You all know our number one rule around here, mind the Lord. But you've forgotten the second rule. We don't use the word can't. Because I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. So we see that he deals with our attitude. Your altitude will never be higher than your attitude. If you walk around, woe is me, woe is me, woe is me, then you might as well say, low is me, low is me, low is me. He says, be you strong. He didn't say if you think about being strong. He didn't say if you felt like being strong. He didn't say if it was convenient to be strong. He said, be ye strong, therefore. huh? So we see the attitude. Notice the principle he deals with on our abilities. He says, be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak. In other words, he says, not only be strong, but be working. We ought to all be working for the cause of Christ. We ought to all do what we can for Jesus' sake. Uh, We ought to take whatever gifts, whatever abilities, whatever he has put in your life, uh, and you ought to use it for the honor and glory of God. Uh, If God gave you a gift to sing, you ought to sing. Uh, If God gave you a gift to play an instrument, you ought to play it with all your might. Uh, If God gave you a gift... uh, to pray, you ought to pray. If God gave you a gift, I ought to be able to tell somebody about the Lord. Tell them, tell them, tell them. But do something for the Lord. Don't let your hands be weak. Hmm? We live in a day and age where everybody's got an excuse why they can't. Hmm. I just came from a land where people didn't have nothing, but yet they're doing. Hmm. Uh, if we had a taste of what they had, that umption and gumption they got, Lord, have mercy, we turn the world upside down. So we see the attitude. We see the abilities. Why should I have a strong attitude? Why should I not let my hands be weak? Because there's awards. That's what it says. For your work shall be rewarded. Hmm? Can I say? You never labor for the Lord and your labor be in vain. But when we think of rewards or awards, we're thinking about, you know, gold, silver, and precious stones. But can I say the rewards he's dealing with is the words of satisfaction, the words of gratification, 
the words of compensation of living for the Lord. You know there is such a thing as uh, having just the peace of mind from God that you're in the will of God. Money can't buy that, friend. Uh, so he deals with attitude. He deals with abilities. He deals with awards in this word, in this verse. But I want to just focus where he says, "Be ye strong." Now I preached for a little while this morning on "Be ye strong." What's well, this afternoon now? I know some of you have done checked the time. I don't care. Be ye strong. Can I say that you can find strength from the glory world all around you? Now, if we live in our own strength, we're all going to fail because the arm of flesh will fail you. But there is strength available to you as a believer in Jesus Christ. There is hope. There is strength. There are things available to you and I that if we just plug into them, if we just apply them, if we just allow God to have them come through our lives, it would not only change us, but it would change people around us. You know why people don't get saved? They don't see enough God in us to get saved. People look around this world and see it's a mess. I mean, this world's on its way to hell. And they know it. Huh? I wonder if Target's regretting that queer campaign they got going on. Huh? You know, that's the only time that this world pays attention when their pocketbooks are affected. But can I say today... Uh, even uh, 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 sinners in this world sees uh, this wokeness and sees all this garbage going on in this world through politics and everything, and they know something is up with this world. Uh, but they're looking for help everywhere else but the church because they see us wringing our hands just like they're wringing their hands. What's the answer? We need to be strong. So I find some places where we can get some strength. Can I say, first of all, strength can be found in the presence of the Lord. Psalms 24, 8 says, uh, And hath extended mercy unto me before the king and his counselors uh, and before all the king's mighty princes. Uh, and I was strengthened uh, as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me. Uh, and I gathered together out of Israel chief men to go up with me. Uh, uh, the psalmist said, uh, Hey, uh, it was one thing to have people me but I found strength when the hand of the Lord was upon me and friend when you're in the presence of God you'll find strength that you don't find anywhere else hey that presence might come in your prayer closet that presence might come when you're driving down the road and you're meditating on him and you're talking with him that presence might come on the job when you're witnessing the schoolhouse when you're witnessing uh, because he said uh, well that when uh, the Holy Ghost would come upon us and we'd be witnesses unto him uh, hey his presence uh, can be found in the house of God uh, I'm telling you uh, there's been times when I've entered the house of God uh, low and weak uh, but his presence would show up uh, and my spirit would be lifted uh, and God's strength can be found in his presence huh listen I don't want to sound like a complainer but we didn't get home till I don't know about quarter of the one this morning now there's a couple things about Miss Annette she don't leave the house with a dirty dish and when we come home from a trip, we don't we don't rest till all the luggage is unpacked and everything's put away. I don't know. Last time I looked at the clock, it's about three thirty, and I done give out everything I had this week. I walked in, brother Ray said, "What's wrong with your voice?" I said, "I've been preaching." I felt like saying, "What's wrong with your face?" But I didn't. <laughs> I didn't do it. But I felt like it, Brother Jack. I did. Huh? You say, what happened? I got in here. And all of a sudden, his presence. He's got a calming presence here this morning, but he's here. 
I wasn't wanting to weep in front of everybody today, but he's just filled me up. Huh? If there's ever a day I would have liked to hand it off and let one of these preachers preach, it would have been today. But I find strength in his presence. Can I say this morning, you can find strength in the presence of the Lord. You can find strength in the power of the Lord's might. Ephesians 6.10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. If you'd ever learn to quit doing it yourself and depend on God to do it through you, you'll find power from the glory world. You'll find help from the glory world. You'll find strength in the power of God's might. I probably shouldn't say this because we're live streaming, but oh well. There was a group from a college that wanted to come down and bring a group down there on the island and 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 kind of be a blessing down there. And 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 Nas will tell you he's on the island. This brother from Papua New Guinea will tell you anytime somebody wants to come down and bring some help, you'll take it. But he told them that I'd be preaching this week. But they came last week, and they were still there, but uh, they showed up. They was there Friday night, and they, they was helping some other churches during the week. And, and they was doing wonderful things. They was, they was singing in the service. There was a bunch of uh, college young people, uh, uh, men and women, uh, and they were singing. And during the day, they was out so winning, knocking on doors, trying to get people to come to church. I mean, a real blessing. They got up Friday night to sing, and they sounded wonderful. I mean, every note was perfect. And then, I mean, they had that, that thing lined out where the guys sang the baritones and the girls sang the altos and they had the sopranos. And, and I mean, it sounded, you know, Mormon tabernacle choirish. You know what I'm saying? Everything was cut and dry. And lo, those bones were very dry. They didn't have any touch. Miss Annette said, I'd much rather hurt our young people up singing. They might not sing every note right. They, they might miss something here or there. Some of them might be chewing gum while they're singing, and some of them might even cast out a yawn every now and then. But most of the time, them young people get up singing, got a little touch on them. Can I say you find strength in the power of the Lord's might? Yep. You know what I like about the talent in our church? We got talent, but people don't depend on their talent. They depend on a touch. And you know what I like about our preachers? They don't depend on their intellect. They don't depend on the outline. They're looking for a touch. And can I say you find strength in the power of the Lord's might? Hey, uh, we need his touch. Uh, and when you got his touch, uh, there's nothing that the devil, the world, or the flesh that can throw at you that will subdue you. Uh, you find strength in the power of the Lord's mind. It'd be a good day in your life when you quit trying to do it. And you start asking the Lord to help you and to do it through you. You start depending on him instead of yourself. I find strength can be found uh, and paying homage to the Lord. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, 26, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. That strong confidence, that strength comes in the fear of the Lord. Uh, that doesn't mean uh, being afraid of God, that if you step out of line, He's going to smite you. That means in reverencing God uh, and respecting God uh, and admiring God uh, in your daily life and in your daily walk and in your worship, uh, putting God first. Uh, and when you fear God and admire Him and respect Him, uh, you'll find strong of confidence. Uh, I remember when Miss Dawn uh, uh, and Brother Peter came to church. Uh, Miss Dawn asked Miss Nett, how in the world do you live with that man? She said, he's not always like that. He said, what are you trying to say? I say what 
you respect God and you fear God and you step out and trust God, you find some Holy Ghost boldness. And can I say that when I'm a preaching and the gods are moving and stirring in my heart, uh, there's a boldness comes over me. Why do you think Jeremy Scott, uh, I went down there to a bunch of rebel teenagers uh, who were causing a ruckus, uh, and he put his finger in their face uh, and told them they needed to repent uh, and trust Christ uh, because uh, when you fear the Lord, there's a strong confidence that comes over you uh, and you can get up and do things you would have never done in your flesh. I've seen folks so timid and they get up to sing and God touches them because they put God first and have a confidence in the Lord. And oh, what a blessing. I thank God for talent, but I love a touch. I thank God for folks that when they worship, they don't care who's around them. They just reverence the Lord. You find strong confidence. I know people, I can't get off of this, but I know people say, I can never raise my hand in church. I can never shout in my church. I certainly couldn't act like some of these people in church and all that. Well, if you'd get your eyes off of people and you'd quit figuring out what you can and can't do and you start respecting and reverencing God above all things, you might find a strong enough confidence where you could go, whoo! That's true. true. Huh? Amen. Listen. The reason I don't ever watch any of that stuff they videotape up there, I don't want to see how foolish I look. Because while I'm a preacher, I really don't care. Yeah. Huh? And it'd be good if you get a good case that I don't care and just let her go. Amen. You only do that if you fear the Lord. If you reverence Him, you respect Him. Huh? Can I say this? You know every now and then when the Lord gets on me and I do that little hop thing I do? I don't know how I do it. I just do it when the Lord hits me. I did that, I guess, several times in that take that devil message. All them island guys got a kick out of it. They was all practicing it afterwards. <laughs> Miss Inez said, is this going to be the new Grenadian thing? They just laughed. Francis Houston is 71 years old. He was doing it. Dennis Celestine, 65. He's up there practicing it, doing that little deal, huh? What are you saying? I would never do that if the Lord didn't get on me because it looks pretty dumb. Huh? It really looked dumb what them guys do, but they got rhythm. You know, I told them, I said, yeah. I mean, they do. They got rid, they singing. And, and, and Jeremy Scott, he don't, he don't sing much, but he does this. <laughs> all in time and all that. I mean, I told him, I said, brother, I can't even do this. <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> what I'm saying is when you fear God, you get your eyes on God. And God fills you up. There's no telling what you do, huh? Uh, and you really won't care because if God's a filling you up, you realize you and Him's the only one in the world anyway, huh? Can I say this? You'll find strength in the promises of the Scriptures. The Bible says in Psalms one nineteen twenty eight, "My soul melteth for heaviness." You ever been there? When you felt so heavy, you felt like your soul was melting. But the psalmist goes on to say this, Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Even when you feel like your soul's melting, you have strength that this world doesn't know anything about. And God can strengthen you from his word. And what a blessing. Now listen, I, I realize we're all different and God works differently in, in some of our lives and I realize that some of you won't shout. That's all right. That don't bother me as long as you worship. But I'm here to tell you, Brother Clint, there are days when we can't even focus on worship because our heart is so broken and so heavy. But yet if we can find ourselves in the pages of God's Word, you'll find strength. Amen. 
Might not be strength to run, but it might be strength enough to take another step. And then you might find another verse that'll help you take another step. And another step. I'm telling you, you can find strength in war. He said, be ye strong. He said, preacher, I can't be strong. You don't know what I'm up against, but I know God's got a verse to help you. And you can be strong enough. You may not be able to carry a mountain, but you can carry your cross. Because he's promised not put more on you than you're able to bear. And you'll find strength in the scriptures. Can I say this? Strength can be found in the peace from the Lord. The Bible says in Psalms 29, 11, the Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Can I say, strength can be found in the peace from the Lord. The world don't have the peace that we have because the Lord don't have him and he's the prince of peace. He said, my peace I leave, leave with thee, not peace of the world, my peace. And the Lord has peace for his people that will give you strength. There are some days I don't have any answers, but I have peace. And that's all I need. Brother Jeremy really challenged me. I told him he needed to be quiet. I was getting under conviction. But he said this. I wrote it down, but I didn't need to write it down. He said, if your dreams do not cause you to fear then your dreams are not big enough your dreams are too small we can make all kinds of excuses brother Bob why we can't just might mean our dreams too small he said that and I got to think about that new building we need built and in the next couple of weeks, we're going to get some fellas together. And I don't know how we're going to do it. I don't know where the money's going to come from. But I know we need the building. I mean, we got so many people out today. And the, and the place looks pretty full. We need that building. Need it for Sunday school rooms. Need it for fellowship hall space. We need it for sanctuary space. We need to make room for more sinners to come in and hear the gospel and be saved. We need it. And I know we need it. But I've been concerned. How are we going to get it? And where's it going to come from? And I got a little Jeremy Scott in me this week. He don't know where it's coming from. But he just knows it's coming. And I don't know where it's coming from, but I just know it's coming. I know God's big enough and God's able and God will. That's the key. And so we're, gonna, we're just going to step out there be strong in the Lord. Uh, we're not going to let our hands become weakened, uh, and we're going to see the reward of it. Uh, won't be long, there'll be another building out front. Uh, and we're going to praise God and worship God for the goodness of God. Uh, say, preach, how are we going to pay for it? We aren't. Uh, he will. Uh, how are we going to get it done? We aren't. Uh, he will. Uh, hey, what a God we serve. Amen. I say, how you know, preacher? Because I have peace. That's all I need to know. Huh? See, if we don't step out on faith, we lose faith. Huh? You can't sit still and have faith. Unless he says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But sitting still does not produce faith. So we're going to step out there in deep water. And just watch and see how big God is. Huh? Say, wow, I just don't know. Well, just get in the book and get some peace, and then you that's all you need to know. Huh? Huh? You say, well, Brother Doug, how are we going to get done? Well, Brother Ray don't need to go to work at Lowe's. We might have to put him to work. Look at that. He's going, ooh, that's a big project. Huh? This one about killed us. But we're still here. Huh? You say, Preacher, I don't know. I'm kind of getting a little scared. Good, then your vision might be getting a little bit bigger. Uh, I'm just saying their strength can be found in peace from the Lord. And I say this strength can be found in the people of the Lord. Listen. I'm trying to wind it up. But there's something about 
encouragement, faith, and strength when we come together. I don't know about you, but if you're on the job and all you're around is people that cuss and carry on all day, you don't find any strength there. But when you come in amongst our kind, and you come in amongst folks that love one another, uh, and you come in amongst folks that know the Lord, uh, and the Lord, uh, His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, the sons of God. Uh, but there's something about uh, when I come in contact with another uh, child of God, uh, and then another one, uh, when we're fitly framed together, uh, you know when something's fitly framed together, it becomes strong. Uh, it's not easily broken. Uh, what a blessing uh, when we can find strength in the people of God. There's been times when I've been weak and a child of God stand up and testify and talk about what God did for them and that strengthens me because the same God that did that for them lives inside of me and loves me just like he loves them. And if he did it for them, he can do it for me. Been times I've been weak and somebody get up and sing a song that does something for me and stirs me and strengthens me. Been times I've been weak and come in and folks just start shaking your hand, hugging your neck, uh, and I find strength in the people of God. Let me say this lastly. Strength can be found in the propensity of the flesh. Paul said this, 2 Corinthians 12, 10. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. I don't think Paul was an independent Baptist. He's taken pleasure in infirmities, sickness, and reproaches when people mocked him and made fun of him, locked him up in necessities when he had needs and the need didn't come in persecution when he was stoned and beaten 39 stripes uh, imprisoned in distress uh, when he was stressed out not knowing uh, how it was going to turn out mm, but this is how he concluded he said I find pleasure in all that because when I'm weak then am I strong. John said it this way, John the Baptist. He must increase, I must decrease. The weaker we get in the flesh, the more we have to depend on him. And can I say we find strength and dependence on God, even in our weakness, even in our weariness, and even in our warfare. When the flesh gets out of the way, God takes over. I was waiting on Tuesday night when Miss Annette was sick and in the bed down there. I was waiting on the preacher to come pick me up, and I'm standing out there in the parking lot of the hotel. And I look over, and most of the buildings down there have these. I look over, and there's a pile of clay tiles that they use for the roof. They're all rolled and, and they hook together and they have rather than having shingles like we have they have clay tiles they last longer they take the heat better because I mean every day with the humidity it was over 100 degrees down there I'm not lying one day the temperature was only 74 we said hallelujah but when she looked up what the humidity what was the heat index was 100 what a blessing hmm. huh if I'd stayed down there another week, I'd have been as skinny as you. Uh, you say, what? What are you saying? I looked over and I saw them clay tiles and my mind went back to that message Wayne Ownby preached years ago about them. And then Brother Josh preached on it Wednesday night. I listened to it. And about them four men that tore the roof off and lowered the man that was uh, uh, sick with the palsy on his bed lowered him down to Jesus to get him to Jesus because the multitude they couldn't get that man to Jesus uh, and uh, the hardship that they went through and everything they did now think about this they carried that man we don't know how far but he's dead weight now if you're carrying somebody that helps you well if he's carrying somebody that helps you 
Say you pick up Brian and he folds over your shoulder, you can carry. But if he's laying there like a stiff, you can't carry. Huh? This man could not help them. He's on a bed. And these men are carrying him. And they're not carrying him on a nice sidewalk. They're carrying him on rough terrain. And they have to be careful to watch their step. Because if one of them steps in a hole, they're dropping him. And I, I don't know about you, but I know if I carry something for a long time, my hand gets to where the blood runs out of it and it can, starts getting weak. Uh, and somewhere along the line, they might have had to shift and use the other hand. Uh, so there was a lot of hardship to get him there. And then when they got there, uh, there was the hardship of the crowd. Uh, they knew all that they went through. They couldn't just set him down uh, or they couldn't take him back home. They didn't have enough energy. Uh, and then they had to go and get the clay out of the way and lower him down. Can I say, in that message Wayne Owen be preached, he preached, we came from the dust of the earth, and until we get the clay out of the way, we can't get to Jesus. I saw them tiles. My mind went back to that message. And I even thought, Lord, you want me to use that thought? And I wrote down some points of my own. Lord never gave me liberty to preach that down there. But, but listen, I was just thinking... They did a lot of works to get that man to Jesus. But them works didn't save that man. It wasn't until Jesus told the man, take up his bed and walk, that the man got help. Can I say, works won't save you. Huh? Only Jesus will. But as a child of God, our works will be rewarded even when we're weary, even when we're weak even in our warfare when we depend on the Lord and not our own strength. I've said all that this morning. Say this, be you strong. I know two things. I know number one, there's a fight coming. The world is against Christianity right now because the world's trying to position itself for the takeover of the Antichrist. Now, I don't know when the Lord's coming back, but he's coming back. And the world and the devil's crowd's getting ready for the exit of the church. And the world and the devil's going to persecute and fight against the church until Jesus comes. Always has, and it's getting worse. Because now, wicked people in high places and spiritual warfare in high places are lining up. And they're making Christians the target. They're trying to uh, uh, empower the IRS against churches. They're trying everything they can to hinder churches. They're trying uh, all they can to hinder Christians and limit our access to witness and tell about the Lord. Huh? You say, what are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to say, be you strong. There's a fight coming. And it's not for the weak. Be you strong. Trust in the Lord. Trust in His might. Huh? Lean not on thine own understanding. I'm trying to help you. There's a fight coming. Be ye strong. There's a fight coming. Can I say this? Be ye strong because we've got a work to do. Sinners need to hear the gospel. Brother Ron and I was talking before church. I mean, down there in Grenada, there, where we were, they'd never heard the gospel. But can I say in Florence, Kentucky, there's people that's never heard the gospel. Can I say it's not Jesus' fault? Shame on me if I go to Grenada and tell them, and I don't tell them here. Huh? We've got a work to do. We've got a Lord to represent. We're to be ambassadors for Christ. And we are running out of time because the night time cometh when no man can work. I don't know about you, but I'm not getting any younger. We're going to do it. We've got to do it now. Huh? Huh? Amen. I, I know we've got some fellows in here that's getting up there in age. We've got some Eds. We've got some Jacks. We've got some guys that get... Wouldn't it be a blessing for them to see that new building before the Lord calls them home or before the rapture? Huh? Wouldn't it be a blessing? You say, what are we going to do when we outgrow that one? Well, then the next pastor can have it. 
Wouldn't that be a blessing, Brother Ed? Yes, see that building get built? Yes, get that other bus and start bringing in sinners and seeing them get saved? Yes, Isn't that what it's about? Yes, sir. Huh? Brother Ed, yes, we ought to do something, shouldn't we? Sure, ready. I, I'm ready to. I'm tired of sitting around, aren't you? Yes. All right. Get a shovel. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I ain't telling that fella. He'll show up with a shovel and a trailer. He'll be ready to go. Huh? What I'm saying is be strong. Be strong. Huh? Y'all remember? I'm trying to quit. I really am. Y'all remember the story about the three little pigs? All the big bad wolf can do is huff and puff, but he can't blow the house down. Huh? The Lord has assured us that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. Huh? It's time we just be strong. Hmm? Just take every wave he throws at us. We was down there and I was watching the ocean hit the rocks where it hit the shore. And they just beat against them rocks. Them rocks didn't move. It's the way we need to be. Just be strong. Be strong. Be strong. You can find strength. You're here this morning, and you're struggling. You can find strength in the Lord. You can find strength in His Word. You can find strength. You can find strength. Yes. The key is, do you want to be strengthened? Yes. If you're here today and you're not saved, listen to me, friend. This is very serious business. Jesus loves you. Hey. He died for you. Right. But He won't force Himself on you. Today you need to be strong and say, I'm not going to die and go to hell. I'm not going to do it for anybody or anything. I know I need to be saved, and I'm tired of being lost. And today is the day of salvation. Today you need to come and give your heart and life to Jesus. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. You come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible, show you how to be saved. You need to be saved today. Say, preacher, why today? Because I don't know if we got tomorrow. Things are getting that bad. I don't know. But I know Jesus is coming. And friend, even if he doesn't come tomorrow, I don't know if you'll wake up tomorrow. But I know you got today. And I promise you this, if you get saved today, you'll regret you didn't get saved years ago. So how do you know that? Because every Christian feels that way. Because there's nothing like being saved. And today you can be saved. Jesus wants to save you. He allowed you to be here today so you could hear the gospel and be saved. The question is, will you be saved? Christian, will you be strong? Will you be strengthened? Lost person, will you be saved? You can be today. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song. <clears throat> While they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, I pray you'd help your people Strengthen them in their inner man. Lord, I pray the Holy Ghost would insulate them and strengthen them and help them. Lord, to be overcomers. God, I don't know what they're going through, but you do. And Lord, I know you gave me this message for this morning. Now, God, I pray for them. You'd help them. And God, I know it wasn't a salvation message, but Lord, I'm fearful there may be somebody here today lost. In a crowd this size, I'd say there's a good chance there's somebody here lost. God, I pray the Holy Ghost would do what I couldn't do. I pray the Holy Ghost would show them that they're lost. Convict them of their sin. And God, I pray they get so tired of their sin under that conviction, they just come get saved get washed in the blood of Jesus they can be saved today if they'll come so God give them the boldness to step out and come and accept the Lord bless now in this invitation we'll bless you for it in Jesus name Amen did you know that IBC is now on iTunes TuneIn, SoundCloud and Google Play head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today and as always thanks for listening